so funny. That laugh is just bad. And not the good kind of bad either. Are you implying that I am not qualified to teach this course? Yes. Yeah, you know what they say, those who can't do, teach. And those who can't teach, teach evil gym. And I haven't been an evil gym teacher in eight semesters. But that's only four years. It's 1,461 days, bruh. 1,461 days. Teach us what you know. Today I'm teaching you the henchminical triad of evil. So, what makes a good henchman? Big muscles? Mm, no. A charming personality despite our evil intentions? Uh, actually, yes! The first law of good henchmanism is banter. A good henchman always has a lot to say. Relevant? Never. Comical? Sometimes. Nonsensical? Every time you open your gosh damn mouth. So, if we can't think of anything, do you want us to just fire from the hip? Yes, do that. And also, do that. The second law of henchmanism is aim. Remember, as henchmen, we are contractually obligated to miss the hero. That killing the hero is the boss's job. So, I need you to practice your aim every day, and when the time comes, miss on purpose. Won't the audience and slash or the hero catch on to us for missing on purpose? No, they are completely gold. And so are you. That brings me to my third and final law of henchmanism. You are dumb, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, right, right. Falling asleep on the clock, you're gonna go far, kid. So you may be wondering what being dumb entails. As henchmen, we never look behind crates, only over them. Never completely block an entrance. You want to stand in a manner where the hero can easily sneak by you. And finally, if you hear a noise, always go and check it out. Makes sense. So, in quick review, banter, aim, and goal. If you practice these three things, you will have the art of henchmaning in the bag. Hmm. Sounds like a mysterious noise coming from the hallway. You should all go check it out. Remember to wear your red shirts for next week's practicum. Oh, and get your permission slips for the zoo signed.